ओम भूरभुव स्वह तत्सुर्वरेण्यम वर्गो देवशीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया तो शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड दिस इज वीडियो नंबर सेवन इट स्टार्ट्स विद द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ saguna brahma as described in vedas and upanishads when brahma becomes conditioned by the upadi of maya and shrinks as it were because of that maya it is called saguna brahma the conditioned brahma it must not however be forgotten that the conditioning is not real but only apparent maya is conceived of as brahma's inscrutable power in association with maya brahma becomes the dynamic creator of the universe ramanuja describes the world bewitching maya as a screen that hides the true nature of lord when the curtain of maya is rung down the effulgence of brahma seems to be dimmed when it goes up brahma shines in its fullest glory the non dual god who spontaneously covers himself like a spider with the web produced from his prakriti no prakriti nature to be maya and the great god its lord like the ocean brahma appears to us in two aspects nirguna brahma is without a wave or ripple saguna brahma is the ocean agitated by the wind covered by foaming waves the tranquil ocean is sometimes agitated brahma too in a sense inactive and quiescent sometimes as it were is active and turbulent but nirguna brahma and saguna brahma are not two realities the sea is the same whether it is peaceful or agitated a snake is the same whether it remains coiled up or wriggles about maya as we shall presently see has no independent reality it it in in hears in brahma as the power of brahma fire's power of burning cannot be conceived of as in a sense different from fire maya in the vedas the doctrine of maya can be traced to the rigveda the word actually occurs there and denotes a kind of magic indra through maya assumes various forms in the upanishadic philosophy this concept is applied to the sphere of metaphysics and thus enlarged without maya such ideas as the unity of existence the reality of atma and the unreality of the universe independent of atma as discussed in the upanishads become meaningless it was however later vedantist like vyasa godapada sankara and ramanuja who fully developed the doctrine and embodied it in their respective systems of thought the rigveda speaks of two orders of experience the one is that of duality or multiplicity which is known to us in our everyday life through the sense organs the other is that of unity or non duality which is direct immediate and intuitive that is to say comprehended without the instrumentality of sense organs or discursive reasoning multiplicity is said to be impermanent finite and circumscribed by a beginning and an end it is dip- depreciated by the vedic seers as the source of grief evil and suffering non duality on the other hand is eternal infinite immortal and everlasting it is identical with absolute reality 
सत्य कॉन्सियसनेस चित्त एंड ब्लिस आनंदम इट इज प्रेज एज द बेस्ट वर ऑफ ब्लिस एंड एज द हाइएस्ट गॉड द अटेनमेंट ऑफ नॉन ड्यूलिटी इज द गोल ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एवोल्यूशन वॉट एवर रियलिटी द मैनी फोल्ड फिनोमिना प्रजस इज एम्पेरिकल एंड इल्यूजरी व्यवहारिका बट नॉन ड्यूलिटी इज परमार्थिका एब्सोल्यूट एंड इम्यूटेबल द रिग वेदा आइडेंटिफाइड नॉन ड्यूलिटी विद रियलिटी और द फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल द रियलिटी इज वन सेज इज कॉल इट बाई वेरियस नेम्स द छांदो गया उपनिषद डेस्क्राइब्स मल्टीप्लिसिटी एज ए मेयर मैटर ऑफ वर्ड्स द वन बिसाइड विच देर इज नो अदर the one inserted into the everlasting nave in which all living beings are fixed this entire universe is the purusha alone both that which was and that which endures for the future the celebrated hymens of creation known as the nasadiya sukta indicates that the multiple names and forms of the visible universe prior to the state of manifestation were in a state of non duality then there was neither ought nor not no air nor sky beyond what covered all where rested all in watery gulf profound nor death was then nor deathlessness nor change of night and day that one breathed calmly self sustained not else beyond it lay gloom hidden gloom existed first one see eluding view that one a void in chaos wrapped by inward fervor grew the diversity of plurality that we encounter in our daily life is maya non existent from the standpoint of ultimate reality maya in the upanishads the upanishads reveal a systematic search on the part of the seers to discover the essential nature or first principle of the universe they came to the decision that the essence of things is not given in the objects as they present themselves to our senses in space and time the entire aggregate of experience external and internal shows us merely how things appear to us not how they are in themselves like the greek philosophers parmenid and plato who asserted the empirical reality to be a mere show or shadow of reality the upanishads declare that the world is only maya and that empirical knowledge does not give true knowledge or vidya but belongs to the realm of ignorance or avidya the upanishadic philosophers through a rigorous process of discrimination analyzed both the individual and the universe all that does not belong to the in alienable substance of things they considered as non self and stripped away the conclusion arrived at was that the great omnipresent atma which is greater than heaven space and earth is at the same time present small as a corn of rice whole and undivided in man's own self the universal self is identical with the individual self the crux of the philosophy of yajna valkya as presented in the brahmadarnya ka upanishad is the sole reality of atma and the unreality of the universe independent of atma it is not for the sake of the husband my dear that the husband is loved but for the sake of the self that he is loved by the realization of the self my dear 
through hearing reflection and meditation all this world is known as the notes of a drum a conch shell or a lute have no existence in themselves and can be perceived only when the instrument that produces the, them is played so all objects and relations in the universe are known for known by him who knows atma atma or the self is the consciousness the knowing subject within us all objects and relationship in the universe exist for us and are known and loved by us only in so far as they enter into our consciousness which comprehends in itself all the objects and relationships knowing nothing that is absolutely alien to itself as from a fire tiny sparks fly in all directions so from this self emanate all the organs and all the worlds all gods all beings just as all the spokes are fixed in the nave and the fellow of a chariot wheel so are all beings all gods and worlds all organs and all these individual selves fixed in the self if atma the knowing subject in us is the only reality there can be no universe outside consciousness therefore the duality perceived in the universe independent of atma is maya this idea is re treated in the upanishads again and again a well known prayer in the brahmanaka upanishad begs the lord to lead the devotee from the unreal to the real from darkness to light from death to immortality what is referred to here is unreality darkness and death is duality which is maya non duality atma alone is reality light and immortality the isha upanishad states that the doer of the truth is veiled with a golden disk this veil must be removed that the seeker may behold the truth the figure of a veil or a curtain has often been used by vedantic philosophers to describe maya but it must be understood that brahma or atma is not to be sought on the other side of maya for there is no such thing as space beyond the sphere of maya nor is for there is no such thing as space beyond the sphere of maya nor is nor is it to be realized after the veil is removed for beyond maya there is no time nor finally is it to be known as the cause of the universe for brahma is beyond the causal law rather brahma becomes real to us to the extent that the universe with its time space and causal principle is realized as unreal that is to say brahma becomes real to the extent that we can shake off from our minds the world of appearance the katha upanishad teaches that sages never find reality and certainty in the unrealities and uncertainties of the world yajna valkya exhorts the seekers of brahma to renounce the longing for children wealth and the heavenly world the mundaka upanishad states that the that when brahma is realized the fetters of the heart are broken and all doubts are resolved later philosophers it has already been stated that the doctrine of maya was developed in the vedanta philosophy in a systematic form by later thinkers the implications of the doctrine have been distorted and misunderstood by its critics 
Indian as well as Western. They tell us that if one accepts the concept of Maya, one must believe that the world is unreal and non-existent, that life on earth is full of suffering and that liberation consists in turning away from it, that human values are totally worthless and that to seek happiness on earth is to pursue a will or the wisp. Proper understanding of the philosophy of non-dualistic Vedanta depends upon the recognition of the two standpoints from which truth can be observed. The one is the relative standpoint, the other the absolute, the former regards the space and causation as actual. From this standpoint, the field of multiplicity is real. Good and evil exist and so also pleasure and pain. The gods, heaven and afterlife all are real. The Indo-Aryans sought celestial happiness by propitiating the deities through sacrifice according to the directions of the Vedas. This is the truth. The sacrificial works which were revealed to the Rishis in the Hymans have been described in many ways in the three Vedas. Practice them, being desirous to attain their true results. This is your path leading to the fruits of your works. Admitting the empir empirical reality of the individual ego and the manifold universe, the Vedic seers developed an elaborate system of theology, cosmology, ethics, spiritual disciplines and methods of worship. The division of Hindu society into four castes and of the individual life into four stages was based upon their recognition of the relative world. Their knowledge, their acknowledgement of the ideals of righteousness, dharma, wealth, artha, sense, pleasure, karma, and the final liberation moksha as worthy human pursuits, purusartha, shows that they appreciated human values and were solicitous for human happiness. Had they considered the world to be non-existent or unreal, like a barren woman's son, such injunctions as they laid down for these four ends of life would have been meaningless. Nevertheless, this world is not real from the standpoint of the Absolute or Burma. For duality disappears when the Absolute Truth is known and all the activities and thoughts associated with the duality of drop away. The searching of Vedanta demonstrates the ultimate reality of Burma. Sarvam Khalvidam Burma, all that exists is Brahma. Non-dualists describe the creation as the illusory supreme position Abhyaropa or Vivarta through Maya of names and forms upon Burma. They explain this subtle concept by means of various illustrations. One or two may be cited here. Karma, a hero of the Mah Karna, a hero of the Mahabharata was a son of Kunti, born before her marriage. In order to avoid a scandal, she put the babe in a pot and floated it down the river. The baby was picked up by a carpenter's wife named Radha and brought up by her as her own son. As a result, Karna was known to himself and others as Radha Putra, Radha's son. Many years later, his true parentage was revealed and he came to be called Kunti Putra. Kunti's son, through ignorance, Karna was given the epithet of Radha Putra. This is a case of illusory superimposition. There is also the story of the lion cub born in a flock of sheep. It bleated, ate grass, and regarded itself in all respect as a sheep. 
one day it was pounced upon by a lion from the forest and dragged it to the water and there it was shown its reflection and a piece of meat was pressed into its mouth then suddenly the veil dropped off and the sheep lion discovered itself to be a real lion through the power of maya or ignorance names and forms are attributed to brahma and the relative universe come into existence through the negation apwada of the illusory many fold brahma or pure consciousness is revealed again the true nature of brahma is not in the least affected by the supreme position of illusory notions relativity is maya the fact that the one appears as the many the absolute as the relative the infinite as the finite is maya the doctrine of maya recognizes the reality of multiplicity from the relative standpoint and simply states that the relationship of this relative reality with the absolute cannot be described or known how it can be that the infinite brahma should appear as the finite world cannot be grasped by the finite mind the very limitation of the mind precludes a satisfactory answer to this question in fact there is no relationship between the one and the many since there can be a relationship only between two existing entities the one and the many do not exist however in the same sense when a man sees the one he does not see the many when he sees the non dual brahma he does not see the universe when anyone seeing the manifold universe establishes a relationship of any kind between it and the non dual brahma the non dualist call that notion of relationship maya a mirage is maya so also its relationship with the desert it is due to maya that one sees a snake in place of a rope water in the desert and multiplicity in place of the non dual brahma vedantist admit that for our practical life there is a difference between illusions dreams and the experiences of the waking state yet insist that from the standpoint of the absolute they are all equally unreal sankra described maya as the power of the lord prame pramesha shakti it is the inscrutable power of brahma resting in brahma and having no existence independent of brahma this is illustrated by fire and its power of burning maya makes possible the appearance of the manifold universe and it endows names and forms with apparent reality non dualist ascribe creation preserve preservation and destruction to saguna brahma or brahma associated with maya sadananda defines maya as something positive though intangible which cannot be described either as being or as non being which is made of three gunas and which is antagonistic to knowledge maya and also is its effect the universe have a positive existence and cannot be called unreal like the horns of a hare they are seen to exist from the relative standpoint but are non existent from the standpoint of brahma maya and its manifestations disappear with the dawn of the knowledge of brahma maya consists of three gunas namely sattva rajas and tamas the word guna is generally translated through do incorrectly as quality essentially the gunas are the very substance of maya everything in nature consists of these three gunas do in varying degrees rajas and tamas have opposing characteristics while sattva strikes the balance between the two 
the principal trait of rajas is energy which is responsible for the primal flow of activity the power of rajas moves the universe tamas is lassitude dullness inertia and stupidity while sattva which is characterized by harmony is manifest on the human level in such spiritual virtues as tranquility self control and contentment the upanishads mention the three gunas the one she got red white and black cast many young ones which are fashioned like to her the chandogya upanishad states that everything in the universe consists of three elements namely heat water and food there are they there are present in all things for instance in fire in the sun in the moon and in lightning the red heat the white water and the black food sankara explains the passes thus in this verse by the words red white and black are to be understood rajas sattva and tamas the red is rajas emotion because it naturally makes red the white is sattva essentially goodness because it naturally makes bright the black is tamas darkness because it naturally darkens the passes thus she got cast many young ones which are fashioned like to her means that all the effects of maya also are constituted of three gunas maya functioning maya functions in the world through its two powers the power of concealment and the power of projection the former as in the case of a sleeping person obscures the knowledge of the observer it conceals as it were the true nature of brahma next the projecting power of maya creates the universe and all the objects seen it just as after a man's consciousness is obscured by sleep he begins to dream in actuality however the two powers of maya function practically simultaneously therefore brahma in association with maya may be called as it were the creator or projector of the universe it is through maya that brahma which is the eternal subject becomes an object of knowledge maya obscures the reality of brahma the self in reality ever free and infinite regards itself as finite entity bound to the world seeking liberation this finite self practices spiritual disciplines such as study of scriptures self control and concentration all of which have their validity in the world of maya and at last realizes brahma as its true infinite self this means that as the veil of maya is destroyed the everlasting light of brahma reveals itself maya agyana ignorance avidya ni science and prakriti nature are practically synonymous maya generally signifies the cosmic illusion on account of which brahma or pure consciousness appears as the creator preserver and destroyer of the universe it is under the influence of avidya that atma or pure consciousness appears as the jiva or individual self agyana makes the absolute appear as the relative the one as the many prakriti is the stuff of matter that out of which the universe is evolved but vedantic writers do not always strictly maintain these distinctions modes of maya there are two ways of looking at maya depending upon one's point of view 
from the collective or cosmic point of view maya is one from the individual point of view it is it is many to give an illustration one can regard a number of trees from the collective standpoint and describe them as a wood or one can regard a wood from the standpoint of the trees and describe it as a number of trees likewise vedantist vedantist speak of collective or cosmic maya and of individual maya the cosmic maya is associated with ishvara saguna brahma and forms his upadhi the individual maya limits the jiva or individual soul and becomes its upadhi maya both in its cosmic and in in its individual aspect hides the true nature of brahma thus it becomes the upadhi or limiting adjuncts of brahma but the infinite brahma can never be limited therefore this limitation is only apparent and not real the formless sky appears to possess sharp lines when viewed through the jagged peaks of a mountain in association with upadhi brahma appears as stones trees birds animals men gods the creator when the upadhi is discarded the object formerly regarded as finite by the ignorant is realized as brahma brahma that is to say saguna brahma is the cause of the universe creation as already explained is the superimposition of names and forms through maya therefore brahma through association with maya appears to be endowed with such activities as creation preservation and destruction and such attributes as omni science omni potence and lordship brahma uses maya as the material of creation that is to say it creates the universe and its various objects out of maya maya has no existence independent of the lord therefore from the standpoint of maya brahma is the material cause of the universe but as pure consciousness it is the efficient cause this causal relation is often explained by the illustration of the spider and its web when the spider wants to weave a web it uses the silk which belongs to it and without which it cannot view weave therefore the spider as a conscious creature is the efficient cause of the web while from the standpoint of the silk it is the material cause it must be remembered however that no causal relationship in the usual sense of the team can exist between pure brahma or the absolute and the universe of names and forms the first element to evolve from sagna brahma is akasha which is usually translated as space or sky and sometimes as ether the creation or evolution of akasha really means that brahma in association with maya appears as akasha from akasha evolves air vayu that is to say brahma in association with maya appearing as akasha further appears as air from air evolves fire agni from fire water ap from water earth prithvi the five elements thus evolved are not the gross elements that we see but they are subtle rudimentary and unmixed out of these subtle elements are produced the subtle bodies of all created beings and also the gross elements the subtle body consists of the organs of perception the organs of action the pranas the mind and the buddhi from the gross elements is produced the gross universe with all the various physical objects contained therein both 
द टोटलिटी ऑफ द सटल बॉडीज एंड द ग्रॉस यूनिवर्स आर उपाधिज ऑफ ब्रह्मा एंड अपियर टू लिमिटेड इन एसोसिएशन विद दैम प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस डिसेंड्स एज इट वर इन टू द रियलम ऑफ रिलेटिविटी एंड इज नोन बाई सच एपी थैट्स एज हिरने गर्भा एंड विराट so i end this video here next video number 8 will start with the topic aspects of saguna brahma so thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks a lot namaskar my dear friends